organizations more efficient and effective. Okay. Very quickly, um, we've talked a lot, I've, I've already sort of addressed a lot of this, but it's this accountability for the care is going to be across the organizations, moving from transactions, sort of people going through the turnstile, I get paid every time, to really the outcomes, a quality orientation. Um, it's going to be population-based, um, and, and it's going to really um, drive us to have better relationships, alignment with physicians, much tighter than we have today and really driving for excellence. Um, what we do really has to be um, at, at its very best. And, we, and, and organizations are gonna have to make decisions. Am I going to be everything to everyone? Um, some community hospitals have to deliver um, a lot of everything because they're the only shop in town, if you will. Um, but you may have a, an organization that is um, cardiology and neurology and orthopedics and oncology and they may decide, you know what? We're going to have to narrow that. Maybe we can't do all four. Maybe we can only do two of those moving forward. And, and, but we're going to be the absolute best at those. Okay, Keeping those things in mind. That, that potentially means a shift in technology. A shift in what we have to be able to support within the organization. Okay. The ACO. Um, this is a diagram. I'll give you another one in a minute. But think of it not so much as the organization because I think um, what it structurally, organization, like what an org chart would look like is going to vary between uh, implementations, but in general, it is um, a group of providers who are tightly connected and are willing and capable of being accountable for a population of patients from cradle to grave, from primary care to long-term care, and everything in between because we have that bundled payment situation now, okay? And that's going to drive, I have to share information better. Um, I think back when I had my kids, you know, the how information did or did not flow from my OB to the hospital was, um, Ms. Smith, can you, w w we're looking for your chart. Sorry, me and the kid can't wait. You know? <laughs> this has to be more fluid. There has to be more connectivity for, for all of our patient information to be able to move throughout the continuum of care, regardless of where we happen to be at that point in the continuum. Okay, there's another picture that's maybe um, a little more, um, makes a little more graphical sense, I guess. Um, we have, first and foremost, patients, the people, um, which at the end of the day, that's why we all have jobs, is um, healthcare of folks. We are part of the healthcare team. And then across the top, you see all the various continuum of care, all the players within healthcare, and how they interrelate or will need to interrelate, and then the, and the, and the payer partners. That accountable group um, includes the payers. What relationship do we have with CMS? What relationship do we have with the Blues and Aetna's? So that we're all driving from a quality perspective, not a transaction perspective. Keeping people healthy, we're taking care of the critical acute situations, and all the way through long-term uh, hospice care. Okay, just so you don't think this is just sort of me kind of making stuff up, um, <laughs> this is a, a graph, and this is actually um, from January of this year, and I'm sure it's changed, but um, the, the company I work for, Premier, has a collaborative. Basically, it's, a, it's an educational opportunity for healthcare organizations uh, to come together and share ideas and experiences and this group of folks believes that, that they are early adopters. They believe that they're pretty darn close ready to be accountable for a population in this manner. Um, and there's quite a few of them on there. This is just the folks that are in our, in our program. There are at least two or three other similar collaboratives going on. Um, I believe Dartmouth has one that's going. Um, I just blanked on There's another big one. Um, so don't you know, don't think that Utah's not involved, <laughs> okay? Um, because I know they are. It's just what kind of, what program are they participating in? Um, then this graph, which has even more little logos on it, are the folks that have recognized, these are the organizations that say, I know it's coming. I don't exactly know what to do, but I need to go to school and figure it out, if you will. And that's what these collaboratives are. 
It's to, it's to allow their leadership teams, their strategy teams, to come together and understand what is this environment, this new environment, this disrupted environment of healthcare, and what does my organization have to do? How do I, what relationships do I have to build? How do I build them? What resources do I need to bring to the table? What knowledge base? Um, so I would suspect there's a lot of this going on in your organizations uh, right now, you know, tonight, probably even. Um, and so being aware of this, I think, is perhaps the first step. And again, understanding what is it that's keeping your senior leadership up at night. So um, what does this mean for us? We'll make the transition, start making the transition to us. Um, collaboration, <laughs> adaptation, um, thinking differently, improvising, being agile and ability to, to change course. I think that's something, one, that we as a community have done over the years because technology changes very quickly. We have to re-educate ourselves. We have to grow. I think this is an environment that we can be very successful in as biomeds if we're aware of the bigger picture and understand how we fit into it. So, what's in it for me? I think we have a leadership role. I think a leadership role is really in this. And I'm not necessarily talking about having chief something or other in front of your name. But just understanding that, that like human anatomy, healthcare is a system of systems. How many of you remember, um, well, how many of you took human anatomy and physiology in your training? How many of you actually remember anything from it? <laughs> yeah. Um, the reason I bring it up is it, if you, it's a great analogy because when, at least when I went through that course, it was taught very silo-like. Here's the cardio system. Here's the neuro system. Here's the skeletal system. And um, I was, uh, my class actually was not engineers. There were five of us um, that drove the rest of the class insane because we'd say, well, but what you're saying is if this happens in the cardio cardiovascular system, then that's going to cause this change over here in the respiratory system. Well, thank God our teacher was a, a, a PhD, and um, she was all over it, but the rest of the class was like, can we just get done? Um, it's true, though. If you, you know, something happens cardiovascular, respiratory responds, the, um, the nephrology system responds, endocrinology, everything responds. It's all interconnected, okay? Well, so is healthcare. If we change all that payment stuff, something else happens. It changes uh, how patients behave. It changes how physicians behave. It changes how we behave because of the type of equipment that comes in. And so it's, it's, it's really sort of that snowball interconnectedness that we need to be aware of in this as, as we approach this and really take on that system of systems. Everything from the, the, the pieces of equipment that we support up through how we perceive our organizations, our whole healthcare organization that we work for.